and welcome to this series of case studies and experiments using PicoScope. That's uh, PicoScope software and also NBH as well. So that's in the Pico diagnostic software. Um, it, it really follows cases that I, I feel no other tool would have got us out of trouble, would have helped us diagnose conclusively what the, what the problem was. In some cases, you don't end up with a diagnosis. You know exactly the depth of repair required and to actually repair is beyond economical repair. Nevertheless, you've got that evidence that, that stops those awful incidents happening where it's an awkward discussion or it just becomes a scrap vehicle. In most cases, or it can be that that is the case. Here's another one. Um, again, involuntary ABS operation. And what I've done here also is a math channel on four wheel speed sensors. But what I'd like you to focus on is the fact that um, the rears, so that's offside rear and near side rear, are reporting a lower frequency than the near side front and offside front. Now, how is that possible when driving in a straight line, uh, all wheels and tires are the same size? How could it be possible that we've got what appears to be different frequencies of road wheels. In addition, um, notice here how our frequency drops for the rear. And it's also accompanied with the um, speed signal interruption, or not interruption, I would let me describe that as um, EMI interference on the signal itself. Now, this is where I focused incorrectly on the signal, because what I was finding was that when the ABS pump operated, it would um, have an effect on the frequent, not the frequency of the signal, but the uniformity of the signal, noise would appear. And I thought, okay, it's the noise that's giving us this issue. Really the clue, sorry, the clue is most certainly in the frequency. Let's move on. Where do we go? Um, using that technique I mentioned about an optical sensor, we can see it there in the image right, and a piece of reflective tape, we rotate the wheel one revolution, and between those two points, we can then use the um, pulses from the ABS wheel speed uh, sensor. Um, we we'll count those pulses to determine how many pulses per revolution of the wheel. We've got the wheel revolution, we've got the wheel count, and now we've got the ABS speed sensor signal count. Um, and on the rear, using that falling edge count between the rulers, 44 teeth. There's a clue I mentioned earlier how the number 48 normally comes up. So repeat the process with the front. Here we have exactly the same, one rotation of the road wheel and 48 teeth. That was a show-stopping moment after a lot of diagnosis on this vehicle. Um, what had happened, the customer had purchased four uh, hub assemblies complete with um, ABS pole rings, of course, built into the bearing, replaced the rears, but not the fronts, uh, failed to inform me of this, and then sure enough, we got this involuntary ABS operation at low speed and different frequencies at low speed as well. Let me just go back one. There we have that rears at four, sorry, rears at 44, fronts at 48. There lies the, the reason why we had different um, frequencies from road wheels of the same size rotating at the same speed. This was a red herring, this noise on the actual signal itself. I was measuring voltage and not current. The system can tolerate that. So there is a learning curve. But um, yeah, quite an annoying one that one was. And one to watch out for, there lies the, um, the importance of interviewing the customer and, and hopefully getting that kind of information up front. Okay, that's it. Um, thank you for watching and any questions, please send them over and um, yeah, we'll endeavor to answer them as ever. All right, take care.